Good morning. Welcome to another edition of Industry Insights. I'm Glenn Richardson, President of the Pinellas and Central Pasco Realtor Organization. Today, I'm fortunate enough to have with me Alan Delisle, City Development Administrator, and Rob Gers, Neighborhood Affairs Administrator. We're going to talk to them a little bit about what's happening in downtown St. Pete. Thank you both for joining us, gentlemen. Glenn, great to be here. Thank you, Glenn. So, Alan, let's start with you. Uh, what are the challenges the city faces with the growth today? Well, Glenn, that's a great question. Um, you know, there, there is a whole host of issues that come that comes with growth, as you know. Um, you know, it 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 can it can look at issues such as density of a community. Um, it can look at you know, traffic issues come into play, um, the types, the, the scale, the size of development, um, the zoning issues uh, related to a city. Um, you, you know, it, it is, in my humble opinion, is a terrible thing not to have growth because uh, uh, there are a lot of negative consequences to that, in, in my opinion. But there's a fair amount of issues that come into play that we're aware of in St. Pete. And we know that St. Pete values um, a lot of the way St. Pete is now. Um, you know, local businesses, uh, you know, people are very connected to their communities, to their neighborhoods. And so we have always been of the opinion that uh, we, have to, we, have to, we have to go slow we don't want rapid growth. We don't want growth for growth's sake. We want quality growth. Um, and then, of course, that raises the question, well, what is quality growth? And that gets us into a discussion uh, in the community about what quality growth is. But we have been very deliberate. I hope we have been very deliberate with, uh, with our discussions um, and working those through with, with our city council. Excellent. Excellent. And, and how has the past year really affected that future growth? Wow, Glenn, another great question. I mean, holy cow. I mean, like everybody out there, we just, uh, you know, um, caught our breath and said, oh, okay, what what is happening? How do we handle this one? But what we did, we did two things. The mayor really asked us to do two things. One um, was... You know, we put the Fighting Chance Fund in place uh, to preserve, and it comes back to the first question, really, to preserve the uniqueness of St. Pete, support the local small businesses, keep them in business to the greatest extent possible, create a bridge to get to the other side. The other thing, though, that I love that the mayor did was the mayor said, do not slow down, do not, do not stop any of our initiatives, any of our projects uh, continue to move forward because we're going to come out of this just fine if we stick to the basics and we continue to make the right choices for our economy. The Grow Smarter uh, plan, for example, and the industries that we've supported, the local small business piece, uh, we, we continue to open up the pier. We didn't stop at all. We opened the pier up in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, who would have thought? Um, and we moved forward with the trap site. We went full in. We continued to, you know, develop our RFP, look for developers for the site. And we heard, the last thing I'll say, Glenn, is we heard from the marketplace, at least I did, from developers, both local and national, not to slow down, to, that, that St. Pete was going to do just fine and you know, don't look away because uh, St. Pete will probably do better than most uh, after after we get through this. And I think that that is, uh, is true. You know, I, I, as a resident of St. Pete, you guys have done just a terrific job managing all of this and getting through, getting us through this in a safe way. And we, we all greatly appreciate that. I'll say that. Um, so how about a few things? What, what are the highlights for upcoming commercial development in St. Pete uh, that you could share with us? 
Well, I hit on, you know, I hit on the, uh, the, the trap development. Um, you know, Glenn, we've got, we've got four of some of the best development teams in the country. Um, the mayor has whittled it down to four right now. I think in May, he's either going to select the early May, he's going to either select a developer or maybe whittle it down to two. Um, incredible teams, incredible developers. You know, I mentioned the pier, uh, a huge success. I don't know how many awards we the city has won so far. I mean, I think we've won like eight or 10 awards, national awards on the pier. And we're going to do the same thing with the trap. We're laying the same foundation. It's the same leadership. Uh, but we've got, uh, we've got a, a marina project that we're working on that is kind of phase two of the waterfront master plan. Uh, we did the pier first. Now we know that we have to make an investment in the marina. We're working out a public-private partnership related to that. Uh, the old police station is going to be redeveloped in downtown. Uh, the Denunzio project is going to be uh, breaking ground fairly soon. Uh, we've got a very interesting project called the MSC project, which, which is on the corner of uh, Central and Fourth, uh, and that's where the city has offices now. Uh, we're looking to redevelop that key parcel uh, and and move the city office building closer to City Hall, so we'll have a campus. Um, and just maybe, I mean, the last thing I'll mention is you know we're working on. Um, the implementation of the 2050 master plan uh, that we've been working on. Uh, and and uh, that's been a, a very broad discussion. Our planning department has, has really done a great job ushering that in. And there's some really key fundamental uh, policies and recommendations that's really going to guide our thinking for the next 20, 30 years. Excellent. That, you know, that's really exciting news, both for uh, all the citizens of our community and for the realtor community, because as you know, we continue to struggle uh, with our inventory issues, as we were talking about earlier. So these kinds of projects are going to help that, and we haven't seen we haven't seen a slowdown in the demand for homes in the area. Uh, in fact, if anything, it's somewhat increased with all of the exciting new things that you guys have brought onto the horizon. Um, how can realtors be involved and help you? Uh, we've est established an affordable housing committee, and we are looking for ways to work with the mun mun municipalities, excuse me, uh, to promote affordable housing and facilitate an easier purchase. I just want to say how, how valuable, you know, the realtor community is uh, to uh, city development and to uh, getting ideas and thoughts about what's going on in the marketplace on a, on a real-time basis. And I just value that tremendously. And so, you know, that input is important. We do put out a, a newsletter, uh, I think, uh, every other week. Um, and, you know, getting on that newsletter uh, is probably good for the realtor community. Uh, we try to keep the folks up to date on what's happening, but more importantly, what's coming. Awesome. Well, on behalf of the realtors, the 10,000 realtors of Pinellas County, we're always available should you need us or want our input. We're happy to be there for you and to support you and um, all the city's efforts as they go. Uh, Rob, tell me a little bit about how the city is taking on the affordable housing issue. Well, thank you, Glenn, and, and thanks for having me and Alan today. I also want to jump in and, and thank the Realtors organization. Um, I think they're so important to our community and, and provide a wonderful service to so many of our residents. So thank you to you and your members uh, for everything you do. So when, when we're talking about housing affordability, I think it's important um, to understand, at least from the city of St. Petersburg's perspective, that we're talking about affordability across a broad spectrum. Um, I think that sometimes people have the impression that Maybe affordability is just a, a very low income issue. Um, and that's not really the way we address it. Um, we know that residents in our city uh, are looking for housing affordability um, from low income families to middle in income families. Uh, and it's important that we provide opportunities, both rental and ownership opportunities across a wide spectrum. Um, so that's really what we're focused on. I, I would say the key for us right now, the main prong in our strategy is supply. 
Um, we have to increase supply. We have to uh, keep increasing supply. That's important for our city. Um, we're big believers in that. I think you've seen other communities where they've restricted supply um, and affordability has become an even bigger problem for those communities. So uh, to that end, we're working on a lot of different fronts. Um, Mr. Delisle mentioned the, the planning department, uh, which he oversees. They've been tremendous partners for us uh, in affordability. We've made some changes to our zoning code to um, allow additional density uh, in the city, which I think is gonna be a, a very big benefit. We've also eliminated some parking requirements, um, especially in the downtown. And, uh, you know, Glenn, I'll be honest about it. All of us did not know whether developers would take advantage of this or not, uh, if the market uh, could sustain uh, these type of units without, uh, the traditional amount of parking, but it's happening. Uh, we have several development approvals in now. I, I think these smaller units um, will be large going forward. We're going to get a significant number of them. Um, and we've done other things as well, um, and, and including increasing our funding uh, for units at the lower income levels. So basically what we're trying to do is increase supply uh, across in all income levels throughout the city. Um, and we, we really also want to provide more home ownership opportunities uh, for residents. And so we've created programs like what we call our lot disposition program, where the city actually acquires uh, single family properties, provides those to developers to build new homes. It's a very unique uh, program. Not many communities do this. Um, and so we're very excited. So. Without getting into all the details, I would say overall, that's our main focus right now, Glenn. Excellent. You know, um, how would uh, our realtors go about finding out more information about those kinds of programs? Well, absolutely on our website. Um, and, and I would suggest that they go to our housing and community development department. Um, and, and to be honest, I'm always available, Glenn. Um, any, any realtor can always reach out to me. Um, I, I think the realtors do a great job um, of advocacy. Um, I know that they're interested um, in housing affordability, and we appreciate the advocacy that they've done. They also, you know, they bring qualified buyers to the table. Um, and, and that's important, Glenn, because, you know, uh, to be honest, we're spending quite a bit of money to, to help build new single-family homes. And if we don't have a qualified buyer, it doesn't really work. So we greatly appreciate the work they do to bring us a qualified buyer. And, and they provide great feedback. Um, you know, what might work, what might not work. Um, so we feel like we've had a really good partnership um, with your organization. Uh, and they can always go to our website or reach out directly to me, Glenn. That's, that's terrific. We really appreciate that. Um, one sort of follow-up question that goes to both of you. Um, as we have all seen in the news, there are some uh, pretty significant new projects happening uh, south of Central, or potentially happening out south of Central. What's your expectation and discussions with the developers and with the city? In general, how long do we look at that process taking? Roughly? Well, yeah, it, it, it does take a long time. I mean, development does take a long time. It's not for those with faint of heart by any means uh, as as your membership knows um, it, you know and, and it all depends uh, to a great extent on you know the process uh, is, is it is it uh, private development uh, if it's private development then you know do they meet the zoning requirements if they meet the zoning requirements then you know they can they can move forward quicker. Uh, they can develop their plans, but they have to take their plans through the city process uh, for permitting, uh, which takes uh, time uh, before a permit is approved. Uh, and then, you know, they have to make sure that their financing is in place and then they've got to uh, get their mobilized, their construction. If the city is involved, if it's a public-private partnership, then generally it's going to take longer, uh, a little longer. Um, uh, we, we try to go as quickly as we can, uh, but if the city has dollars in the project, then uh, we have to do a development agreement, um, and there may be things that the city is looking for 
uh, out of that project. And then, you know, there's a, a fair amount of discussion time with that developer back and forth. Um, uh, we're working on a project right now for Tangerine Plaza. And we've been having a lot of discussions with that developer back and forth for, for maybe six months uh, until we can get to a point where we agree. Uh, and then we can bring it forward. Uh, and then there, you know, there generally are about, you know, 200 obstacles to every development project, uh, no matter what. Um, so the public private partnerships take longer, um, up front, but once that agreement is in place, then it's the same amount of time. Gotcha. Good. Bob, you want to add anything? If you don't mind, Glenn, I'd like to add to that. Um, you know, you mentioned development in South St. Petersburg, and Alan didn't say anything, but I have to praise him and his team for what's happening in the Skyway Marina District. I mean, it's just amazing what has happened along 34th Street South. And, and you know, I mentioned the importance of supply, and, and we've got hundreds of new units coming online now in the Skyway Marina District, and it's just really exciting. Uh, I would just also answer from my point of view that, you know, when we start getting involved on the housing side, working with developers uh, on units and things we might be able to do to assist with units, it, I would say it's typically a couple years from our involvement until the time the units are ready to, uh, to be occupied. Gotcha. Great. Well, I want to thank both of you for being here today. We really appreciate your time. And more importantly, we appreciate all your efforts to make uh, St. Petersburg a better place to live. So thank you for your time this morning and thanks for joining us. Glenn, thank you for your leadership. Thank you so much, Glenn. Thank you to you and your whole team. Thank you. Have a great day.